Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Build Show. I'm John Peitzman, JP, certified high performance coach and creator of The Build Framework. I help individuals and teams all over the world thrive in their personal and professional lives. And as your host on this show, our aim is to help transform lives one guest at a time. And how do we do that? We do that by having amazing guests. And today is no different. We have with us Steve Farrell. Steve Farrell is co-founder and worldwide executive director of Humanities Team, a nonprofit organization based in Boulder, Colorado. The organization is focused on helping people throughout the world awaken to their deepest self and the interconnectedness of everything in the universe. In his previous life as a successful high growth technology executive in Silicon Valley, Steve felt a calling to play an active role in creating a conscious movement that could help people across the globe connect more deeply with the divine truth of oneness and consciously participate in creating a flourishing and awakened world. Steve followed his heart and humanity's team was born. And because we have Steve with us here today, we're going to change things up a bit today. I know you know The Build Show and what we've been doing for years now, which is to talk to every guest about B-U-I-L-D. You know what that is. Build relationships, understand the business, implement strategies, lead and inspire, and deliver excellence. But today, because we have the opportunity to talk with Steve, we're going to go deep into you, which is understand the business. And there's nothing more important to understand than the business of our life and why we're here and what it's all about. So we're not gonna go B-U-I-L-D today. We're gonna take you, understand the business, and dive deep into it. And joining us from Boulder, Colorado, in the United States, via video technology, to have this discussion of understanding the business is Steve Farrell. Steve, welcome to The Build Show. Hey, thank you, John. Uh, fantastic to be here with you. Thanks for the invitation. and. Uh... Really looking forward to this program. Yeah, I love it. I, you know, interconnectedness, right? To everything in the universe. I mean, you, you don't go small when you have a goal like that, right? <laughs> Helping people know how we're all connected to absolutely everything. Um, let, I mean, let's just dive right in. I mean, start, start with that. What does that really mean? Because that, that can, you know, kind of, I think, be perceived in different ways from different people. So as kind of the, the, the author of that in a way, uh, from a mission standpoint, what, what is your intention to help people be understanding that interconnectedness to everything in the universe? You bet. Yeah. So that's a good place to start. So uh, let, me, let me just begin by sharing this. This is really not a, a woo-woo thing at all. Uh, if as, as we uh, talk about it. In fact, let's go right to the science of it. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure your viewers, uh, because this is a conscious program, are well familiar with when we say everything is interrelated, interconnected, and interdependent. This is, this is being said over and over by uh, leaders across the globe. Now, as well, many actually are going further and share that actually everything is a part of one thing, that we're an emanation of that one thing. Everything says a resonant energy field, and we're we're a part of that resonant energy field, or like a wave under the ocean. So now this wisdom's been around forever. It's uh, the you know the ancient truth, uh, the timeless truth. Uh, but as well, science is affirming this now. And uh, it's I'm, like science is catching many... up, like they do a lot of times, right? We we know it from thousands of years ago, and all of a sudden science catches up to be able to quote unquote prove it, right? When it's been known for for centuries, decades. Millennium. Yeah, exactly. And and boy, you know, there, as we know, there are leaders just in so many different disciplines that are devoting their life work to this, including scientists, Greg Braden, uh, Bruce Lipton, Lynn McTaggart, Elizabeth Sartoris. I could go on and on, but but Greg uh, Nassim Harriman actually is the one I want to stop on because I'm gu I'm guessing many of your viewers are familiar with his Resonance uh, Science Foundation. Uh, and his work, he's, he's said to be the leader in unified physics. And he is uh, just on the verge here in, in the weeks or months ahead, he's unveiling his unified field theory, which, and if you've heard this term unified field theory, it's yes. because uh, Albert Einstein, you know, at the end of his life, this was the thing he was working on. And he couldn't, uh, and this, this was back, I think, in the 40s. This was some time ago, and he didn't have the tools uh, that, uh, that Nassim has with his team of, uh, of experts in mathematics and science to pull it all together and to, 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 to have a true unified field theory that 
covers everything from quantum scale, which is you know atomic level, the smallest of the objects, to cosmological objects, uh, galaxies, and everything in between. And right. and not only that, but not just the material world, which is what science uh, discusses now, but actually the non-material world, which is to say life. So everything, every material and non-material. Uh, now. Uh, we just did a master class with, uh, with Nassim M. Gregg, and I'm not a scientist myself. I wasn't even very good at math or science, but, but I did spend a lot of time with these guys. And I can tell you a little more about what's coming, that, uh, uh, that, that, that there's a resonant field across all of life, uh, that the field, uh, which is this the, the whole, uh, which, which we can call, you know, the omnipresence, omniscience, omnipotence. So wisdom, uh, power, uh, connection to it all, that all of these things exist at, at a field level. And, and, and the field, now this is where it's fascinating. There are many things that are fascinating, but it's at a cellular level. Right. Okay. At a cellular level, all of that exists. So, so these clear words where we hear clairvoyance, or claircognition. So clairvoyance is we we have these things that we see into the future. And I'm guessing your viewers, uh, your listeners, are, are have had moments of clairvoyance as I have, or claircognition. Clair like when I met my wife back in the 90s, I knew this was the woman I was supposed to marry. Yep. And I'm guessing that many people have had that experience. So when we say the field is present in everything at a cellular level, now it is, it's explaining these clear words of why did we see into the future? How did we know that we were supposed to do something? Well, because, because within reach of everybody is that wisdom and, and that power, yes, that's its own discussion, uh, where we align with that whole, with the mission and purpose and vision of the universe, which is, to, which is life itself, where, where our whole life is about affirming life, about serving life first. So I, I could go on. I don't want to get too many mouthfuls in here, but Nassim Harriman's Unified Field Theory, uh, study it. Go. You can even Google now. There's some uh, some of this science is already out there. The full unveiling of his Unified Field Theory is right around the corner. And it he, he comes straight out as a scientist and says, we are all one. We, we are actually all a part of the one, the universe, the creator. You could use the word God, uh, the divine love life doesn't matter what the word is, you know, but we're actually all a part of it. That's absolutely amazing. What do you think is important for people to understand as we're living this life as it relates to being able to be connected to everything? Yeah, boy, a big question. And there's so many really important things we can talk about here. Uh, first, let me just say, as we go deeper here, that this whole aspect of understanding who we are better uh, that this was actually how I, uh, my, my business just took off. I, I started my business in Silicon Valley, my first company, uh, with used furniture, two guys, um, and, uh, it's always two guys in Silicon Valley in a garage, right? <laughs> or something. Executive suite. Works. I mean, nothing, you know, nothing. And, and it grew, we grew it to 75 million in uh, 10 years, sold it to NEC, the Japanese company. Uh, and, and the principal way that we did that was through this whole aspect of just personal growth of understanding who am I really and making sure my ladder is leaning against that wall and not other walls, the, like the old American dream wall of yes. I'm going to just floor to the accelerator, going to go for top and bottom line growth. Uh, that's I'm going to do that at, at, at all costs. Uh, it, that, that is not how I got my growth. I got my growth through actually understanding who I really am, who, what, what our invitation in life really is. Would it be fair uh, to really say- getting my ladder then against that wall. And, and that's how I got incredible professional success. And more importantly, that's how I gained true prosperity in all of its forms. Yes, financial, but in all of its forms. Yeah, no, I was sorry to interrupt. I was just asking if it's fair to say that because in, in, in coaching and helping, you know, through personal development, we have this conversation sometimes about instead of actually trying to go after something and achieve something that's out here that we think we want, that if you let all that go and if you're still enough and you connect to your heart, right, the build framework is a heart-based system, right, and you in a way get out of your own way, then you can actually feel what wants to manifest through you. 
And when you do that, it actually happens and you're not really achieving and going after this, you know, thing out there. It's actually coming through you. Is that a fair kind of summary of what you're saying as well? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, so that is, and the, it, a heart based system um, is part of when I, when I, when I talk about interconnection or oneness, uh, it, it is a heart based system. It's, we can, we can use this integral framework here if we want to talk about this, which says that there's an external world and then there's, and so there's the, and then there's the interior world. And Ken Wilber, of course, uh, created this integral framework. And what he says is today we, we live in what he calls a flatland where all of the focus is the external world and the interior world is just left barren. We, there's, there's so little focus on it, which is why he calls it a flatland. But when we bring these into balance and so where we live from the heart, so, and where we live in this place of connection with the universe, with, with humankind, with the earth, and don't treat it as a refrigerator, and with plant life and animal life, uh, well, then a whole new world opens up to us. And the world that we look out on is, is sacred, you know? So mm -hmm. uh, we can't treat the earth like a refrigerator. We can't just look at other people's plight and say, well, that's, you know, too bad for them and, and build a little castle for ourselves and our wife and kids. Uh, we can't do that because we're actually connected to all of it. And, you know, they say uh, connection equals uh, responsibility. So if, if it's just me and my wife and kids, my responsibility lies just with my family. If I'm connected actually to the whole of uh, mankind and the earth, well, then my responsibility is to all of that. And responsibility then leads to positive action, right? If we're mature, we're not only right. we're, we're, when we're responsible, we, we uh, create positive action. So all of these things, it's like dominoes that fall. So where we understand the connection, the oneness, uh, the responsibility, the positive action, uh, and, and we're living in this heart space, which is where we, uh, there's a sense of, of real, I'm gonna use the word love, you know, for, for others, love for the community, love for uh, people that are underserved and underprivileged, uh, then uh, that's where all the magic happens. That, that out, if jumping ahead, what's interesting is, this is how my business grew uh, enormously, you know, how I got incredible growth. And I was in the middle of Silicon Valley where my competition were these big manufacturers, Hewlett Packard, Cisco Systems, Apple Computer, uh, the Gap, Esprit, these are the companies right. that were hiring the same people that I was hiring. And yet I was able to hire an enormous numbers of people, retain that talent and get incredible growth because it was a heart-based company. Right. And is it too esoteric <laughs> to go out there and say that that interconnection and impact and influence that we have on the universe, as we're talking about here, that extends beyond what we otherwise think is not just limited to our physical actions, but also limit, uh, applied to our thoughts and our emotions and our kind of mental attributes as well. Or what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah. So let me share this. And I'm sure I'm sure some of your uh, viewers are, are, are inside of this. Maybe others aren't. I don't know. But uh, I, we and humanities team, we're a 501c3 nonprofit. We work with people across the spectrum in this area of conscious living, including many mediums. I work with very mature uh, mediums. In fact, they're so good that there's a line three years long or one of them five years long. You can't get an appointment with this medium for five years or three years. Right. They're that good in terms of connecting you, you know, with uh, with the afterlife. Now, uh, they talk. They all talk about an afterlife review. So maybe you're familiar with this term afterlife review. And in the afterlife review, what happens is, is you're after you transition, you're looking at yourself in these important moments of your life through other people's eyes, through your spouse, through your kids, through uh, business uh, people that you were involved with. And, and you're feeling their emotion as, as, they're, as they're looking at you, as they right. were experiencing you during your lifetime. And the only thing that that afterlife review is about is the emotion of, did they, did they feel a sense of love? Did they feel truth? Did they feel that you were in service? That this is the only thing the afterlife review uh, does. It doesn't look at the house or the car or the vacation. <laughs> the bank or the account? Bank ac it doesn't look at the bank it, account? <laughs> it, does, it doesn't look at any of that. And, 
And so the, the only thing, now we can take something from this. The only thing that it's looking at is the, is, is the emotion of these people that were a part of our lives, where, they, where there's this feeling of, God, you know, this person has helped me, uh, has loved me, has been in service, or this person has treated me miserably, horribly. Uh, and so what often happens in these afterlife reviews where, we're, where we don't become conscious uh, during our lifetime is the feeling of seeing these things that are happening over and over and the person experiencing, I could do better than that. I could have done better than that. I could have done better than that. So now, if, if you believe this is true, and then uh, I suggest, you know, this is our moment where we can shift to living more consciously, more from the heart, where we're being truthful, where we're being loving, where we're being in service. Because at the end of our life, I can tell you, I believe 100%, it's the only thing that counts. So this is the, the furthest thing from woo-woo or unimportant. This is actually all that we're looking at at the end of our lives. So, so this is back in the 90s when I was an entrepreneur and growing my company rapidly. This was the thing I was feeling into of, am I gonna just continue to be a serial entrepreneur and grow these companies to 75 million, one after the other, after the other, or with this, all of what's going on on the earth today, am I gonna go get involved in some something serious where I'm working with other people that are focused on what, what we, we call conscious living, mm. where we're, it's all about creating a sustainable and flourishing planet. And, and what's interesting is not only was that incredibly fulfilling for me then and now, but uh, my business took off a uh, hyperbolic growth when I came into when I came into this heart, open heart based business. Because if you think about it, if you're a vendor or you're a customer or you're an employee and somebody is being open hearted with you, not just telling you what to do, listening thoughtfully to what you're saying. So that's very interesting and I line a hundred percent. That's why we're so connected here, right? And and I I think I would argue too, be interested in your input on this, that it's actually not that just people like that and are attracted to that, but they're attracted and like that because it's a frequency thing, right? And they say, raise your frequency, lower your frequency, all these things, but basically, whether it's high, low, whatever it is, it, it attracts like frequencies, right? So when your heart is open, when you're in that space, would you agree that you're actually then attracting those individuals into your world in a way and vice versa? Yes, for, for sure. So let me, let me explain how it worked for me. Um, before I really went down fully this, what I'm calling conscious path, where I'm understanding who I am, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I have an everlasting life, I have unlimited potential. These are all things that are part of conscious living, where we understand that, where we're a part of this ocean or this one that has these properties, everlasting life, unlimited potential, et cetera, et cetera. It's loving in its basis. So once I understood that and lived into that, uh, it just... Uh, it opens a completely new world. So yes, we're attracting uh, people like us, but as well, uh, what and this is an acid test here, is what went away for me was the cognitive dissonance. So uh, well, first, so cognitive dissonance is what I mean by that is where, because I think we've experienced that, I'm guessing our, your viewers too, where, where there's this chatter of our conscience saying, you know, you really need to do this, uh, make this a priority in your life and things, uh, even as you're experiencing like uh, the American dream where I'm doing uh, on private jets and going to these unbelievable locations and things. Uh, so the cognitive dissonance was on the one side of, wow, this is unbelievable. I've never done anything like this before. And on the other side, it's like, wow, with all of this stuff going on in the world and you're sitting here on uh, doing this kind of stuff, this is where you want to spend your life, Steve. So it's it's that chatter back and forth. So the incongruence yeah. of what you think you should be doing, what you're actually doing. Yeah. Gotcha. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you know, cognitively, I'm I'm kind of uh, split right. uh, as to where I'm where I'm I'm sitting with this. Uh, once once I gave myself fully to this whole everlasting life, unlimited potential. I'm a part of the one, you know, it's my true identity. Uh, once I lived into that in this bigger agenda of 
with other people that are on this conscious journey that I'm going to do my very best to create a sustainable and flourishing planet in this generation for myself, for kids, for future generations. Once I gave myself to that, cognitive dissonance went away. I, I have zero cognitive dissonance now. Right. I'm, it, it's more of a, I'm at peace. I'm like, I know I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Sometimes people call this living into your dharma, you know. Right, you're on your um, path, so, right? You're connected to your heart. There's lots of ways to say it, but yes. Um, it's yes, not a struggle. Yeah, exactly. I'm right. connected to my heart. I'm connected to uh, what I believe is my true invitation in life. I'm living that out. Uh, and and there's nothing, you know, more fulfilling than that, where you know you are, you are stepping into the reason that you're here. Uh, and this is also what I call true prosperity. There's financial is, of course, a part of it. Uh, and I've been blessed that way. But uh, it's so much more than that. It's, it's, it's when you're open hearted, you're, you're a loving person to not only to your wife and your kids, but to people in general. And, you know, you can see the things that people are dealing with. You can see what we're dealing with on the planet right now. And of course, there are many challenging things going on. Yep. And you can feel uh, it, not just see it, right? You're contributing. You can feel it. <laughs> and, and that's, that's all the difference. And um, I, I really, you know, think this is an amazing conversation and I, I would want to talk to you for hours and hours and we probably will. Um, from the standpoint of people listening and, you know, understanding this business of life and the interconnectedness and making it practical for them. I mean, what, you know, a lot of people I'm sure out there are listening and saying, okay, yeah, well, that's all great. Maybe I believe some, maybe I don't, whatever. I've had some experiences like that or I haven't or whatever, but what, what, is your advice for them to just take that next step? What, what do you think that next step is? And I know it's probably different for everyone, of course, but in general terms, what is a good path for people to, who want to understand this even more deeply? And if you're still watching, you probably do, <laughs> and you're on this, you know, this journey. What, what is a practical thing they can do to kind of deepen their own personal understanding? Other than, you know, we'll talk about how to get involved with a humanities team and the rest of it, but is, is there anything kind of practically that you, you recommend to people who want to open their eyes, open their heart, open their soul to this topic that we're talking about? So, yeah, de devote, I would say, uh, and there's nothing more important that we can do. It starts with ourselves. So, and then it's an overflowing from there. So, to the, so my my invitation is live into it. So, this whole conscious living thing. Uh, and of course, there's so many uh, Deepak and Wayne Dyer's books and Neil Donald Walsh's books and uh, Humanities Team. You know, we actually are in transformational education. We've got free programs everywhere. I have I have three hours of free programming on the Humanities Team website. Uh, called Be the Inspiration, Be the Influence, Be the Leader. It's a three-hour free program. Uh, so uh, that's humanitiesteam.org. But, but live into it. Go, uh, whether it's books or transformational education, or uh, actually probably for a lot of your viewers, they're well familiar with this. And uh, the thing that I hear all the time from people is, gosh, I'm just, I don't, I don't know whether I'm ready to make that jump. I want to, I've got one foot, you know, in the Western world and the way things are done and, and one foot in this conscious world, Steve, that you're talking about. Uh, and the problem when you've got one foot in both worlds is you're, you're not, you're wobbly. You're not living into, into the fullness of who you are. So what I would invite is people to really deeply get in touch with their own, you know, where they go inside, they're, they're living this heart-based life and where you get in touch with your own station in life, what your own calling is. Uh, and I promise you, you will. If you, if you just spend the time, uh, whether prayer or meditation or walking in nature or just being in silence, uh, in mindfulness. So there, there are many ways to get there, but where we just quiet the world around us and we spend that quality time, we will get in touch with our own station in life. Why, what our true invitation in life is, and then just live fully into it, live fully into it. I'm I live fully into it with my wife and my kids. Uh, I, the, a co-founder and the executive director of Humanities Team and the culture of Humanities Team. This is what we do full time together. Is we live into it, and in our case, we're uh, developing new transformational education programs that we call master classes and all kinds of topics like this slightly science-based uh, topics that I've been talking about. Also, spiritual topics like. Uh, like finding your soul's purpose. Uh, other topics, uh, the late Barbara Marks Hubbard has developed a number of free programs on our site. Uh, and, and there are many others uh, too, too many thought leaders to name here. But, and Humanities Team is only one of the 
organizations in the transformational education space. There are many others, so that including that have free programs. So uh, that's what I would do. Go really get make sure that you're fully educated on this as to what it is and how it works, and then and then most importantly, live into it. And that's when your life is going to just totally take off. Right. And then enjoy the ride, right? Because <laughs> it's going to change. And I think that, you know, like any understanding of anything, um, it, it, it takes ongoing diligence, right? It takes ongoing, you know, um, peeling back the onion and, and, and putting intentional focus on what it is that you want to understand. So if you want to understand what we're talking about here more, um, I, I encourage all of you to do just that. I mean, how can how can they get a hold of you specifically? Um, are you in other countries? I mean, what's 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 kind of the the overview of your company? Is it just uh, you know in Boulder, Colorado, and you kind of have matrix people, or do you have you know stations and and franchises all over the world, or what what does it look like, and and how can people get involved? Yeah, so we're we're 19 years old, uh, humanities team, uh, and we're, again we're a 501c3 nonprofit based in the United States. Neil Donald Walsh, who wrote Conversations with God, and myself founded Humanities Team back 19 years ago in June 2003. Uh, about half of our demographic, what we call our teammates, are in the United States, and half are all over the world, Australia, New Zealand, Asia, Europe, uh, South Africa, all over the world. There are people that are involved with us. Our, our worldwide Facebook page, which is our largest social media presence, has 600 and uh, 65,000 people. We're posting all day long, uh, including free programs and things there. If you go to Humanities Team Worldwide on Facebook, you'll find it. But we're also on TikTok, on Instagram, on LinkedIn. Uh, we're on all the platforms. Uh, now, we're also in many countries. We have uh, uh, about 55 country coordinators and country contacts. So in Australia, we have a, a country coordinator. In New Zealand, we do. Uh, in 50 countries we do. And, and so these people are volunteers in the countries that are supporting uh, the kind of things that we're talking about, conscious living, education, activism, where we're out in education systems or healthcare systems or, uh, or where we're looking at biodiversity uh, and the uh, environment. So where they're involved in all of these kinds of things in countries. So if you go to humanitiesteam.org, uh, you'll see on the navigation a, a lot of education, including we have a streaming platform, a conscious streaming platform called Humanity Stream Plus that's got hundreds of transformational education programs on it. But also, if you go down into the bottom of the page, you'll see in the countries uh, what countries were represented in. If you wanted to represent us in a country, it, there's an email address of somebody you can reach out to, Christine Glenn, who's based in Canada, who runs World's Regions. And you could be involved with us that way. Uh, so the navigation at the top that also has the free programs, and then the navigation at the bottom that shows you all of the different uh, parts of humanities team as, as we're 19 years old, will uh, give you just, we have blogs, we have podcasts, it's all free stuff. We do the Global Oneness Summit. If you're familiar with it, we used to call it Global Oneness Day. It's now the Global Oneness Summit because it's like seven to nine days long. It's a free program all the way through. Uh, it's all devoted to what we're talking about here now, living from the heart, uh, living a conscious life where we understand who we really are, a part of this beautiful universe, uh, a part of life, a part of humankind, a part of the earth, where we're really living into that. And it's not just some cute little thing that's talked about. We're really living fully into that each and every day. And what is more important to understand than that? So with that, Thank you so much for taking the time with us today. I wish it could be longer. Um, I encourage everyone out there watching to go to that website, go to the Facebook, or go to wherever you can and really engage in this because like any understanding of anything, um, the first conversation is just the first, right? You need to take your own time and have your own journey so you can make the information yours and truly understand it. But with that element of being curious, you will understand it. And I know that everyone is curious about this. Uh, in my humble opinion, what else is there to be curious about <laughs> except the existence of life and why we are here? So thank you again so much, Steve, for joining us um, today. Thank all of you for joining us as well. For more great resources uh, to help you become your best self, including free worksheets and downloads, make sure to check out thebuildframework.com. That's it for this episode. I'm JP. We'll see you next time on The Build Show.